Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the May 28th Alternative Compliance Review Committee um, ACRC meeting. My name is Mary Kelly, and I am the chair of the ACRC. I'd like to start off by introducing our ACRC members. The committee members, please feel free to wave to the audience if you're sharing your camera. David Walters is our vice chair. Renee Rubens, Paige Case, Eric Zatterall, Toby Holmes, Padma Belusu is one of our alternate members. She is standing in for Hermie Goods, who was unable to attend our meeting today. Michael Paul James is our other alternate member. He will be participating in our discussion today, but will only provide a recommendation if one of our other regular members is, an, is unable to. We like to start each meeting with a brief overview of the role of the ACRC, as well as the meeting structure for members of the public who are in attendance. The ACRC was established to provide recommendations on requests for alternative compliance for projects in the transit-oriented development, which is TOD, the zone district. Alternative compliance allows the implementation of alternative and innovative design practices that meet the intent of the TOD districts and do not have a significant adverse impact on surrounding development. Alternative compliance is only allowed for select standards. Each standard shall be reviewed against its specific review criteria to determine that, alter that the alternative compliance meets each standard. No standard may be waived in its entirety. Our scheduled meeting time runs from 4 to 8 p.m. Committee, committee members may request a brief recess between item reviews. Each agenda item will include the following. A brief presentation of the request and recommendation from city staff, no more than five minutes. A brief presentation of the request and any supporting information from the applicant, no more than five minutes. A public comment period for those in attendance to provide input on the item. This period will be limited to five minutes of discussion in support of the request and five minutes for discussion in opposition of the request. After the public comment period has been closed, the RCAC may request the applicant and ACRC staff members on the request. After the committee members have asked their questions, I will close the hearing for discussion and deliberation. The ACRC will then draft, will then craft a recommendation for approval, approval with modifications or denial. Once a recommendation has been moved, I will do a roll call vote to capture each committee member's recommendation for our minutes. A final vote on the recommendation by the ACRC will close the hearing. Written comments on this request will be accepted after the meeting until 11.59 p.m. on May 29th. These comments should be sent to our staff liaison at Kirsty Sanchez, Kirsty, K I R S T Y dot Sanchez, S A N C H E Z, at charlottenc.gov. Comments should be limited to 375 words and will be provided to the Planning, Design, and Development Director before a decision is made on the request. Staff will forward any written comments along with the ACRC and staff recommendations to the Planning and Design Development Director the PD&D, within five business days of the meeting. The, AC, the planning director will make the final decision on the request using the recommendations provided by staff in the ACRC. If alternative compliance is denied by the PD&D director, nothing precludes the applicant from pursuing alternative options through filing an appeal with the Zoning Board of Adjustments, rezoning to Todd X EX, or from submitting a new request for alternative compliance. Before we get started, does anyone from the committee need to recuse themselves from any of the items on today's agenda? All right, having, seeing no hands wave, I'll go on to the agenda for today. Today's agenda item is only one item, and it is ACRC 2020-00001. This is a request for alternative compliance from Section 15.3.3 Parking Structure Design Standards. 
I'll invite staff to present the application and staff recommendations on this request. You have up to five minutes to do so. Kirsty. Hi, um, good afternoon and thank you for joining our virtual compliance or our alternative compliance review committee meeting. Uh, before I get started, I just wanted to introduce myself. My name is Kirsty Sanchez and I'm a planner in our planning design and development department. I'm also the staff liaison for our alternative compliance review committee meeting or ACRC as you'll hear us call it. Uh, before I get started, I just want to make sure that I say that today's meeting is being held as a virtual meeting in accordance with our electronic meeting statute. The requirements of notice, access, and minutes are being met through electronic means. And the public and media are able to view this meeting on the city's YouTube channel. So with that, I will get started. Holly, can we please advance to slide two? Thanks. So as Mary mentioned, today's request is for um, alternative compliance for the property located at 114 Freeland Lane. The applicant is seeking alternative compliance on section 15.3.3, parking structure design standards. Next slide, please. This property is zoned Transit Urban Center, also known as Todd UC. It's highlighted in red on the map here. The properties across the street to the north and south of the site are zoned Transit Community Center, uh, which you can see as Todd CC on the map. To the east of the property, we have uh, South Boulevard and the light rail. And then across the street, we have the Todd Mixed Use Zone District. And then across the street on DeWitt Lane, we have single family residential zoning. Next slide, please. I've included screenshots for the properties across the street on DeWitt Lane and Freeland Lane. There are four single family homes fronting DeWitt and a large warehouse building along Freeland with multiple tenants. Next slide, please. As I mentioned earlier, the applicant is seeking alternative compliance on section 15.3.3, parking structure design standards. This section requires active uses along 90% of the ground floor building length along primary frontages excluding areas for required vehicular and pedestrian egress and mechanical or equipment rooms. For levels above the ground floor, this section requires that the building is treated with either all floors wrapped or a 10 foot minimum building step back for the parking above. Next slide, please. Here I've included a screenshot from our Todd ordinance showing the two design options available for parking structures along an other primary frontage in our Todd UC district. So again, the Todd standards require active uses on the ground floor and either treating the upper floors with wrapped uses or that 10 foot minimum building step back. Next slide, please. In lieu of providing active uses on the ground floor and the 10 foot minimum building step back, the applicant is proposing to treat the facade along the wood lane with the decorative louvers and murals, shifting the parking structure further away from the street and providing an accessible green space with landscaping and seating areas. Along the Freeland elevation, the applicant is proposing decorative louvers, louvers and murals along the entire length of the first two to three levels of the parking structure. They're also proposing to shift the parking structure further away from the street here and to provide additional landscaping between the structure and the street. Next slide, please. So here we have our um, site plan showing the proposed configuration for the parking structure and green space along DeWitt and Freeland. You'll see that the applicant is providing an accessible meandering path with seating areas. Along the wood lane, they are proposing nine shade trees and 91 shrubs, as well as live ground cover, perennials, or ornamental grasses in that hatched area that you see beside the deck. Along Freeland Lane, the applicant is proposing three shade trees, 30 shrubs, and live ground cover, perennials, or ornamental grasses. Next slide, please. Here we have the elevation along Along DeWitt Lane, the applicant is proposing to treat this facade area with decorative louvers on 79% of the facade, murals on 4% of the facade, and a decorative railing system for the remaining 17% of the facade. We do not have an elevation for Freeland Lane, but the applicant has committed to providing a similar architectural treatment along the bottom two to three levels of the facade. These levels, levels will be treated with decorative louvers along 56% of that area. 12% for murals, and then the decorative railing system will be used on the remaining 32%. The upper levels will include infill louvers that meet our Todd design requirements. Next slide, please. So this slide shows the criteria that we use when we review requests for alternative compliance on parking structure design standards. 
Staff feels that the proposed design meets the alternative compliance design criteria and the intent of our Todd ordinance. The proposed design is compatible with the surrounding area and does not impact pedestrian safety and walkability. The proposed decorative elements provide interest and break down the scale of the building facade. Um, shifting the entire structure further into the site and providing accessible green space with seating areas achieves the intent of the 10 foot step back in addition to, you know, further engages the pedestrian environment. So again, staff feels that the proposed design meets the alternative compliance design criteria and the intent of our Todd ordinance, and we recommend approval of the quest. So that's all I have at this time. So I'll pass it back to you, Mary. Thank you, Kirsty. All right, next I'll invite the applicant to present any additional information on the request. You have up to five minutes to do so. Yeah, hi, this is Mike Carroll with Beacon Partners. Um, appreciate the time. Um, I, I think the presentation covers a lot of it, but um, we've been looking at this, um, or working with this client um, for this potential um, facility. Been looking at the setup for a long time about how to make it work for everybody. And um, as discussed earlier, what the original um, option we were looking at was in compliance with the zoning, which included building basically single story retail space, as it was shown um, in the plans earlier, kind of up to the street to activate that space. Um, but that space, that space, which mostly run, runs along DeWitt is not it's not really leasable space. Um, there's not really much traffic or people on that street. So our thought was there's not going to we could build that space, but there's not really going to be anybody leasing that space. Um, and this is, would be a better alternative in terms of creating more green space and making the parking deck uh, more attractive at the end of the day than building a single story space that, you know, realistically wouldn't be leased by anybody. Um, so I don't know, Matt, if you have anything to add to that, but that's kind of um, how we got to this point. Yeah, I think that's all good, Mike. Thanks everyone for having us on the call today. Um, you know, I would just add that the building, the parking deck being stepped back further away from the street allows us to have the green space that we showed on the rendering. And our intention in that is to provide a, um, a relaxed environment. So the building is not up against the street, but in, instead allows for the public to enjoy that area. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is there is a lot of pedestrian activity in this area already, and a lot of people will walk from neighborhood areas in this area um, down to Witt and then down Witten uh, to get either to the bus bays, uh, you know, the CATS has, the bus shelters that are in this proximity, as well as to the light rail station. So um, we feel like this. Uh, you know, variance allows not only for us to have some flexibility with the building and pushing the building back a little further away from the street, but also to provide a, a nice pedestrian experience for the residents and visitors in the area to, you know, to be off the street a little bit further back from the street and to get down to all the multimodal transportation in the area. Um, so I would, I would just kind of add that comment there and, and definitely open it up to the the next section of uh, the, the agenda if needed. Thank you, Mike. Matt, we appreciate your input. Um, now's the time for the ACRC committee to ask staff or the applicants any follow-up questions on the request. Again, I'd like to ask that the discussion be kept to relevant to the design standards re related to this request and alternative proposed by the applicant. Do any of our members have any questions they'd like to ask? Can I ask one question? Yep. Um, yes, so uh, my question has more to do with your response design-wise to Witten versus Freeland and why the parking is moved kind of on the Freeland side while you put the skyscraper on the Witten side next to the existing parking. It would seem like parking would be next to each other and you're ultimately condemning the other side of Freeland which is currently some tanning salons and some relatively business instead of putting, why is the skyscraper on the Witten side instead of the Freeland side, I guess is my question. And it, I'm assuming it's a big deal. I'm assuming there's a lot of thought that went into that. Uh, 
Um, yeah, so the skyscraper you're talking about is the, the proposed 20-story office building, or are you referring to the taller portion of the parking deck? I'm sorry, I'm just trying to get clarification. Um, so I was looking at also the renderings on your website, and it looks like there's an L-shaped building where you have one building that's on South Boulevard and another building on um, Witten. It looks like they're two separate structures. Is that what's... Uh, yeah. Yes, they are. There's a there's a 20 story building on South Boulevard. Um, you know, I'd love to get into more detail. I think we kind of have a limited agenda. Is is it is your question related back to the parking deck? And, uh, yeah. And so the question is, is you just you chose to put the future building, which is on your map, on the Witten Street side? Why is that not building on the Freeland Street side? Because Freeland is all the way to try oh, on the Witten dead ends, Mike. which would bring the parking to the other side. Yeah, Michael, so the intention um, there is if, that. If I could, okay, go I'm ahead, sorry. Mary. If I could, I'm sorry if I could interrupt, Michael. I appreciate your question, but again, the ACRC is really focused on the um, the proposal on the table in terms of the the Todd compliance and the alternative compliance that's been submitted. Um, so uh, this really isn't um, the place for that question, but I think a follow up discussion. Um, outside of this might be worthwhile, if that's appropriate, Kirsty. Right, so again, uh, today's request, we're looking at the parking structure design standards, so we really need to be focused on that. The applicant is seeking alternative compliance on the requirement for having those active ground floor uses, and then for having the 10-foot building step back. Other than that, we're not really looking at the rest of the site right now, we're really just looking at how the frontage along Freeland and DeWitt, how that's treated to meet the intent of our Todd district. All right, I understand. So I guess my question is, is why why do we think Freeland, why did you determine that Freeland is a dead street? That that you wouldn't have tenants, because you already have tenants across the street and you have, but you, but you don't think tenants on your side of the street would work? Michael, again, I think that that's uh, more of a, an overall, I'm sorry, Matt, Mike, I'm interrupting you. Michael I Paul, I think I'll withdraw. That, that's a um, more of a zoning question, a de development design question that's really not within the scope of our area of responsibility. As Kersey mentioned, we are focused on, you know, the parking structure design standards and not the building placements and building types. Hello, can I say something? Sure. I wasn't sure whether I was unmuted. It's, anyway, um, I mean, I think sort of what's behind that discussion that we can't take any, any further is the fact that when you look at what the TOD rakes said, and like many others, I spent months helping to uh, create this, that what the applicant is asking is something that is explicitly denied under the TOD regulations. Clear of that. What they're proposing is a solution that is explicitly denied under the TOD regulations. And, and I'm searching for anything innovative about this. Because what we're supposed to do on this committee is to evaluate in, innovative alternatives. It seems to me Sadly, what we've got here is sort of business as usual, and we're being asked to rubber stamp business as usual. And that, to me, seems a very, very problematic attitude. This is Eric here. I would have to second David's comment there. Um, you know, like adding residential on uh, DeWitt Lane would be innovative if that was a partnership with somebody who did residential uh, to activate that street, considering across the street is residential homes. Um, I mean, I appreciate the green space and uh, that was added, and I just don't know how much that space is going to be used. Um, and yeah, that's on my comment. Yeah, I think, you know, just to be sure, we've got a, a mature single family neighborhood. And the whole point of the TOD regulations is to create and enhance walkability and to avoid long, blank, 
facades which, even if they're decorated, they have no real use. And so we are going to, you know, this, this proposal actually is very, I would find offensive to the single family property owners across the street. And it is against all basic good urban design concepts and parameters. I'm shocked that staff approved this. I'll say it very clearly. Because this, if this committee is just going to rubber stamp business as usual, we might as well go home. And I want that in the minutes. This is a very basic, old fashioned site plan with zero innovative ideas. Holly, this is Christy. Um, can you scroll over to slide 10 of the presentation? So, thank you all for your feedback so far. Um, again, this slide shows the criteria that we use when we're evaluating requests for alternative compliance. So, I also want to make it clear that staff did not approve uh, the request. Staff is recommending approval. After this meeting, we'll take the ACRC's recommendation and provide that to our planning director. And ultimately, our planning director is the one who makes the final approval. So, I just want to make it clear that a decision hasn't been made on this request. Our director will be the one to make it. Staff is just providing a recommendation and right, we recommend approval. So we're, rec we're recommending approval based on the criteria in, in this table. So these are the criteria that we really need to be looking at when we're reviewing this request. So does it maintain compatibility with the adjacent developments and surrounding land uses? If this design, if the applicant was proposing to put this building design right at the, the edge of the setback, then I don't know that we would have recommended approval for that, but since they're providing you know, in this enhanced uh, green space area with the meandering path and the seating, we think that helps to soften the facade. And so that makes it um, more appropriate for the, the overall feeling in the neighborhood. It's maintaining the pedestrian safety and walkability. It's the site is going to be providing the required sidewalk, but in addition to that, they're providing this accessible um, meandering path. Uh, the proposed design is using horizontal design elements and other alternative um, methods to continue to provide interest and break down the scale of the building facade. If you'll remember back um, a few slides ago, I, I had a screenshot from the Todd ordinance where we show the way that the building could be treated. If the applicant, um, I think one more, two more, okay, here. So if, if you look here, you can see that, um, again, the areas above the ground floor, they, they still need to be treated. Um, I would just say that the design that is being proposed is a little more decorative than what would be required. Uh, so again, we feel that overall, if we could go back to slide 10, please, um, you know, that this, this is providing an, an interesting facade. Um, item four there is not applicable to this request. So, uh, again, it meets the overall intent of the parking structure design regulations. There are no blank walls that are greater than 20 feet in length. Um, it does have both horizontal and vertical design elements, and the cars are screened from view. Um, and then, uh, well, that's the next one. Continues to screen the interior circulation components of the parking structure, and then, then maintains pedestrian safety. So, again, th these are the criteria that we have to use when we're making an evaluation and providing recommendations. So looking at this criteria, that's how staff came up with the recommendation that we support the request. Thank you. Kirsty, could we um, or uh, could we go back to the slide with the different Todd um, identifications, Todd CC, Todd MO, Todd No, not that one. Yeah, this slide. Thank you. Oh no, go back. Thank you. So, so what we're looking at is the Todd UC, right, in red, that square. And then we have Todd CC and Todd CC and Todd MO across the street and Todd CC next to it um, across South Boulevard. So whenever we're looking at this from a Todd standpoint, Todd, these Todd, um, standards were put into effect, what, uh, two years ago or a year and a half ago, Kirsty? 
just over a year. Okay, so the, the, I think the concern that people are raising, just to take this a little bit further, is that whenever you look at behind the Todd UCC, the, the area in red, there, there is, I guess, single family that winds in through there. Is that correct? Correct. Um, so within, within Todd, and within Todd UC, C, Todd UC, for a parking deck, you know, we can either put on the ground level, we can either put um, retail shops, or we could put this alternative design. That's what's on the table for that, that's being presented before us. So from a, we cannot change the Todd zoning, right? That that's that was already established. Correct. So this, par this parcel is rezoned to Todd UC. Um, the rest of the development will need to meet our Todd uh, standards. The applicant is coming before you today requesting alternative compliance on the design for the frontages along DeWitt and Freeland, and um, again, you can recommend approval, denial, or approval with um, I think con conditions or. I think we say conditions. So um, that's up to the the committee to really work through that and and figure out how that how you guys want to recommend on this. So, Kirsty, let me ask a question. Whenever you scheduled this meeting, did you send out notices to the the neighborhood along Ellawood Plaza, Dewitt Lane, et cetera, so that they could come and speak? We sent out notices to property owners within 300 feet of the site. Um, we invited them to reach out to me if they wanted to speak during this meeting. We didn't receive any requests to speak during the meeting. We've also invited them to submit any written comments to me that I could share at this meeting and with our planning director after the meeting when he um, makes a final decision on this request. And so far, I have not received any written comments either. Uh, due to a recent North Carolina legislation, we need to accept comments uh, through tomorrow, I think it's 11.59 p.m. tomorrow night, and um, the additional comments that we receive on this request before, or, you know, by that deadline, those will go to our planning director, but so far we have not received any comments. Okay. Thank you. Um, any, any other comments or questions from the committee? Yes, I do have a question. It's Toby. I do have a question. Um, if you can hear me. Yes. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, is the setback on Freeland that you are providing, is that a required setback or have you offered additional space for the uh, green area, uh, sidewall, uh, chairs, et cetera, that you plan to provide there? Kirsty, this is Matt. If you could maybe go back, or Mary, go back to the site plan, I can talk about that. So, so the interesting thing about, um, and I don't want to um, assume that you know everyone knows the the differences between setbacks and build two zones, but uh, it's definitely been a learning experience for me. Uh, if you notice, there's a setback as well as a build two zone on on both of those streets, and we have purposely built some utility areas into the build two zone, um, but then purposely um, what we thought was gonna be a good idea was to, to not build to the build two zones and instead activate those build two zones with green space and activated uh, pedestrian you know, sidewalks and benches and landscaping and so forth. So the idea there, um, Toby, was to, to, to activate, I guess you would say, the ground level of the building with a utility area, which I believe is an exception within TOD, but that instead of pushing everything against the Bill 2 line, uh, to give it some relief away from the street. Does that answer your question? I'm sorry if it doesn't. No, I think it does to some extent. So what I hear you say is that um, you have provided more than was required. Uh, I or believe- have you what was required? So I believe um, I might need someone from the, the planning department to, to talk about the technicalities, but I, I think the way it's written is 
this building could conceivably be built all the way up to the dashed line that you see, uh, which is the build to line. Um, so, so frankly, the parking deck, um, if we had a perfectly rectangular uh, site, because uh, parking decks want to be kind of squared or rectangular in shape generally, um, we could have conceivably, I think the way that the code actually reads is that you guys want us to build to the build to line. Okay, so we could have conceivably had, um, whether it's a one-story retail, you know, restaurant type use with a step back of 10 feet. We could have had this entire parking deck structure right up against the sidewalk at the build two line. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is that we are not doing that uh, on purpose. And I think that's part of this variance is to give it some relief away from the building to allow the green space. So in a way, our vision of this uh, was, was actually to benefit the public by pushing everything away from the building, uh, away from the street rather, and not be so kind of in your face as you're walking down to it or Freeland. So sorry if I misspoke, Kirsty or, or Mary or anyone from staff, but that's kind of, um, that was my interpretation of why we push things back away from the street. So right, and I can add on to that a little bit. So as Matt said, the required setback for both DeWitt and, and Freeland is 16 feet. So you can see that they're providing a 16 foot amenity zone or an 18, an eight foot amenity zone and an eight foot sidewalk. So where you see on the site plan where it says 16 foot setback, they could actually build the building starting right at that line. That build to zone, we require 80% of the building <laughs> frontage, the building facade to be located within that build to zone. Um, so by, by including the utility area and by including both of those utility areas, we get a portion of the building in the build to zone. We're able to count the open space that they're providing towards meeting their build to requirement. But um, rather than having the building located in that build to zone, which is what we would typically require here, um, you know, it, they're able to provide this enhanced green space area, which does help to push the structure further away from those residential uses. Um, again, typically the building would be required to completely be within that build to zone. So they're able to provide this ad additional green space area, which helps to soften the facade and helps to get the building that much further away from those residential uses across the street. Can I say something? Am I on? Hello? Yes. Yes. David, I think you're can on mute. Can unmute David. Please unmute David. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Yeah, we can hear you now, David. Okay, super. Um, I'm looking at the, at the actual page in the TOD rates, there are more diagrams than the edited selection that we were shown. Uh, this page has a very clear table, and we are dealing with something called other primary frontage. That's, that's what that street is with the single family on the other side. It, it's, a, it's defined as other primary frontage. There are four frontage conditions specified in the ordinance. We only saw two of them. There's, there's a fourth one which says parking structure pushed back minimum 30 feet with landscaping. And that option is absolutely outlawed under the TOD rates. So, I mean, I think we've got to be very clear here. We have a, we have a very basic site plan, which does what we always used to do, which was push the park into the back and just hope it's okay. Whereas in fact, the POD rigs were designed very specifically to get better design. That's very poor design, it's old fashioned design. What, what we were hoping for was that parking was actually brought in from the street so you could get a, a thin liner building, just like Furman is done uh, at the rail yard. 
Uh, but the fact that we're being asked to approve and staff are recommending approval, something that is expressly forbidden, and there's nothing special about this application that, you know, suggests that, you know, why would we suddenly approve something that the TOD regs are explicitly written to deny? Let's be clear about that. What, what the applicant is proposing is is rejected. There's a big X against it on this this frontage condition. So, what you know, and and this is behind some of the other observations about why a thing. You know, this is a solution which is only resolved by a better site plan. Let's be very clear about this. This site plan backs all the problems of screening and you know car parking against residential neighborhoods, just pushes them up and doesn't try to deal with them by design. It tries to deal with them by just some decoration on the facade. It's, the, it's a denial of so much thinking that went into the TOD regulations. If we approve this, you know, I mean, there's no, I'll be blunt, there's no innovative thinking here, period. So, so, so this is Mike. I appreciate all that feedback on the project. Um, we actually, we actually developed the rail yard. Um, so, if you like that, that that was us. Um, there's certain things that work and certain things that don't. Um, you know, whenever you do a project like this, you're balancing a lot of things. Obviously, uh, we're not trying to shove a parking deck into everybody's backyard. We're trying to accommodate a lot of different things. Um, the residential won't work here. We could do the, the retail, but at the end of the day, um, you're going to end up with empty retail space, a single story empty retail building with you know, the parking decks not going to look as good above it. Um, and you're going to lose the green space. So I, to me, um, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, you know, you can talk about doing different things um, on the parking deck to make it not feel or look like a parking deck. If you don't like what the rendering looks like, but um, you know, I don't don't really totally appreciate saying there's no innovation. This is not a good site plan. Um, we we've spent a lot of time on this, and um, I, you know, I think it 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 makes a lot of sense for a lot of folks. So, uh, including, I think it'd be a better alternative than doing the retail, which we we can do, um, and I think is allowed. It just at the end of the day, I think. People will look back and say, why, why did you do that? I'd like to respond to Mike, um, if I could, and um, well, in the group as well, to some extent. This is Toby, um, I, and, I, and I really appreciate that um, you kind of clarified that the site plan itself is driven by a lot of different balancing acts, um, and, and parking has to go somewhere. And that's just that is that is where things tend to fall, um, and I guess to be um, to I do hear uh, Dr. Walters um, though um, with regard to innovation, and I don't think it's I just feel like site plans are sometimes so bound by the things that um, the things that you have to achieve um, that it, it can be difficult to achieve innovation in site plans. Um, I guess what I've thought about this for probably the last week, and it's just kind of something that's stuck in my head a little bit, um, is that it's not necessarily the site plan. For me, it has a lot more to do with the treatment of the building. Um, I think that the um, I think that the guidance provided to staff to make their decisions is wildly subjective. Um, I think Dr. Walters is right in the sense that there is more guidance in the ordinance than they have maybe let into their thinking to some extent. Um, I don't see the treatment as being overly, um, as being um, really overly thoughtful. I think there are other decks in Charlotte that are not, you know, that did something very similar um, to when they weren't required to. Um, and I guess what I get really hung up on is that if you're able to, to not build ground floor retail, which I think is one of these things that now is some kind of relic of the past in a post-COVID-19 world, um, we do have to add something better back, and, and architecture is where things, I think, fall off the map for me. When we look at Louvre 
uh, louvers and murals. Murals to me are very temporary and need to be changed fairly regularly. Um, louvers are an enhanced word for the word shutter. Um, so basically, we put some shutters on the parking deck um, and expect it to take the place of a ground floor retail investment. And where I don't think the site plan can really be adjusted probably, just knowing how those work, I do think the architecture for the building, the parking deck, is is not up to standard, especially when you're asking to be let off uh, or, 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 or allowed to not provide some um, some ground floor retail, which, yes, having sat through many, many, many uh, meetings to design that TAD ordinance was integral to the ordinance and was kind of developed to not let people out of it to some extent. So to sum all that up, I think your site plan is what it is. I think your building architecture is not great. Um, and I think that the way it's being treated is not above and beyond. It seems fairly standard um, compared with the trade-off you're asking for. Thank you. Thank you, Toby. Um, any other comments or questions from the ACRC? Um, hey, this is Paige. I I just wanted to echo um, David and Toby there. I, I noticed in reviewing it this week that, you know, of course, as David pointed out that that the the setback is disallowed per the the chart and the elements and and asking as they said to kind of you know allow that through without what i would what i saw is is a fair trade-off i guess um especially since it was abutting a residential area and understanding that that um how the TOD was set in place is already is already done and and over and you know because it's a a single family abutment that's that's not changing today but instead of suggesting you know something that would perhaps have been allowed in one of these other options that were given in the TOD the ground floor active with um you know louvering or screening above but instead maybe if it had been suggested that this back half or even you know at least that 50 percent that abuts the um the R zoning becomes a fully wrapped architecturally significant piece or perhaps that back corner um, to really transition and you know it, it's a it abuts the TODCC and the R zoning but doesn't really consider those at that back face so just wanted to echo that instead of perhaps asking to be let off entirely that it you know maybe tries to rejoin one of these other other options that were given in the TOD. And, and you can have a fully wrapped building that appears to be storefront without actually putting commercial in that in that area. And I understand parking garages require the, um, you know, you're required to get your fresh air intake and you can't fully cover a building, but, you know, um, tilt up with thin, with thin brick or anything that it kind of transitions from that residential to that UC designation, I think makes a little more sense there in addition to that setback and that activated green space. Thank you, Paige. Any comments, any questions, any additional comments or questions? I have, yeah. one. I just wanted to go yeah. through the uh, eight, the eight um, standards for in section 1511 2C1B. Uh, you know, number one is design maintains compatibility of adjacent developments and surrounding uses that would require the residents across the street would be another parking deck, correct? I mean, I, it's not a, the same use or uh, I, I don't see how that's how you put a what nine level parking deck next to single family that doesn't meet that surrounding land use, nor does like the redevelopment or the rezoning. I think it's what CC that is across the street, Freeman. Um, Again, that probably be redeveloped into something that relates to Todd, unless they put another parking garage deck right next to it, then it would meet that requirement. To design uh, pedestrian safety and walkability. If you look up walkability, I don't think it makes it useful um, or maybe interesting. That could be debated uh, unless you really make a wildlife refuge there. Otherwise, a couple trees and a bench probably won't make it safety. 
in the definition of walkability. Uh, that's questionable. I mean, if it's not, you know, activated by people um, and it's kind of deserted, uh, safety could be questioned. Uh, so I don't think it meets a lot of the, uh, you know, other requirements, especially parking the structure design regulations. Number five, you know, active uses are residential or non-residential, um, not green space is not in the definition in the in the Todd uh, regulations. So uh, just going through a couple of those things, I just, it's hard to see how this uh, really, you know, qualifies for it. Thank you. Hey, hi, um, Mary, this thank is you, Tyler. Um, Tyler, can you hear me? hello. Hey, hi, how yes, are you? thank you. Yeah, um, I know, and I have to jump off on another call soon, but what I'd like to get from the um, committee is, um, perhaps you could help the uh, proponent by sharing some of your suggestions for how they can make this better. Uh, I've had a lot of discussions around how this does not meet the intent of the TOD ordinance, and, and I think I, I get that part. I, I would like to go from being negative about it to being more positive as to how can how can we make this work if we were to make it work? Um, eventually, obviously, you have to make a recommendation, but I also want to make sure that we, this is the very first one that we're going to be hearing, and I can hear you all uh, with your comments, but I also just want to know in this in, in the situation that we're in, um, the pandemic and and all of that going forward. And obviously, Charlotte continues to be an attractive environment for um, businesses and opportunities to continue to uh, attract jobs and, and grow as smartly as possible. But we've also made great investment in our transit system. So I, I hear that. What I'd like to know from David, from Toby, from Paige, and pretty much from you all is, Maybe you can give the, the developer a sense of what you would like to see with regards to some of the issues you've raised that may help them um, to reflect, you know, some of our thoughts and aspirations. Thank you, Taiwo. So, David, yeah, please. Uh Hi, Taiwo. I mean, I think we would all absolutely agree with those sentiments that you've just expressed. Um, it's a little difficult for us. I mean, even experienced designers like myself who who do this work professionally, when we suggest uh, a good alternative, it's a bit easy for the developer to say, oh, well, that wouldn't work. Uh, I suggested, you know, a, you know, a, a thin skin of, of, of small apartments. Oh, that wouldn't work. So um, I think we've got to get beyond uh, the developer knocking down any ideas that we put up. And essentially, well, I mean, how many par how many cars are in this parking deck? I mean, we're, we're a hop, step, and a jump from a transit station, and we've got one, two, three, four, five 60-foot bays for well, how many floors? Five, six, I mean, there's thousands of cars in there. Thousands of cars within a two-minute walk of a light rail station. I mean, at some point, we've got to say, the world is changing. I mean, it's changing in front of our eyes. But if, I mean, you've only got to, this sounds simplistic, but if you take even a 30-foot bay of, of parking, or, you know, just a 60-foot bay, and, you know, find, you know, put basically residential uses there, if you have to increase the height of the parking, if, you, if you've got to have all those cars, put a higher bay behind the office building. Um, the, the answers here don't really seem to me to lie in a, a more uh, well-considered site plan. And I, you know, I do this for a living. I know how much work goes into this stuff, and I don't take it lightly. But this this... It is possible to do better than this. And as you say, Taro, this is the first to come through this, this committee. We're looking for innovative ideas. We're not seeing them yet. Um, and we're seeing, you know, 
massive car parking right next to TOD stations uh, using, you know, probably numbers that worked last year. You know, the post COVID world, we don't know what's what's happening. The, the millions of dollars of construction cost in that parking deck. Someone's agreed that's a good idea. It seems to me to be crazy. So, I mean, there's probably some very basic difference of, of, of opinion here, but I'm, you know, I'm a pretty decent designer and I can see ways to improve this. Now, I don't have a client over my shoulder saying, oh, you can't do that. But there's got to be some wiggle room here. We can't let this kind of thing where we're looking for bright, new, innovative ideas go through with a couple of trees and, and some louvers. I'm sorry. It's as simple as that. And it's not a question of a more adventurous landscape. It's redesigning the site plan. It's that clear. So that's my recommendation. The, for what it's worth, the parking accommodates about half of the employees. Um, so it's a large project. So um, that's why the parking is so much. Oh, I mean, I totally get it. I mean, I know parking ratios just every bit as well as you do. Um, but those things are going to change. I mean, I do master planning for a living. We don't ever project out parking decks. You know, when we're looking 10 years down the road, we don't, you know, there's, there's, there's no financial models that, that make sense with parking decks this, this huge, particularly next to you know, train stations. Now you, you've got your finances lined up. I'm sure you, you've got constraints all over the place, but you're, what it comes down to is you're asking this committee to approve a very old fashioned design with minimal creativity. I'm sorry, I'm blunt. And I don't think it's our job to do so because the regulations were designed to stop this. So I'm sorry. David. David, thank you for your comments. Um, I'd like to offer a recommendation as well. Would it be possible, to David's point, to redesign the parking deck to make it smaller? Um, and along that side of the street that is, uh, I think it's DeWitt Lane, yeah, instead of having those two rows of parking, um, shrink the building and actually put a playground there for those residents that live and that that live in the R5 area could you actually do that so you're making more open space but make it usable open space where families can enjoy you know a picnic area or a playground you know along that along DeWitt Lane just a thought yeah i mean this this is we're not doing this. This design is not, this is not a speculative development. This is specifically designed for a corporate relocation client that um, there's probably been 12 months of work that's gone into this. And um, so, I, I, you know, if this client goes away, then, you know, obviously we can do whatever, you know, we we'll have to go back to the drawing board. But if we want to pursue this client, um, this is this is what they need, and this is what we spent the time on. We have tried to, you know, like that open space is not a, not just the space next to the parking deck, but the space on the side. Um, we tried to put, you know, that's not required that we have an open. Uh, that's a pretty decent size open space over there. It's not required. We we tried to carve that out. We could have put another use there. Um, we've tried along the way to balance everything in terms of what the client needs and. You also can't see the buildings um, that it's not that's pretty special or what I would call high end development project. Um, so this is uh, it, we don't we don't really have a choice with this client on kind of changing or. I don't know, moving the parking deck around or reducing the amount of park. So, Mike, let me ask another question, if I may. So, ha have you gone back to the client in the last few months and asked him, do you really anticipate all of these workers working in the office? Are they going to have, you know, given the pandemic, are they going to have more people working from home? And we need to accommodate, you know, we're not going to have as many people driving. Well, and also people may be coming in from either further away and using the light rail and not actually parking in the deck and actually using the light rail to get to that particular office. Are those questions you can ask 
your client? Yeah, we, we've asked them and, you know, we'd rather not build as much parking either, but this is, again, there, this is, would be a project that delivers in 2023 and they would have 4,500 people when they're all full on both buildings. Um, so the parking deck really, again, only accommodates about half of those people. Um, so yeah, that, that wouldn't tell, they're not interested in reducing the amount of parking. I mean, they're paying for it too. So it'd be added incentive for them to have less parking, but this is, this would be the, the parking they would need. Thank you, Mike. Other comments, questions, ideas? Yeah, Thank I you. wish, um, yeah, this is Padma. So I wish um, some of the residents or any of the residents either sent comments or attended the session. And I share the same concerns um, expressed by other uh, members. Uh, you know, it's too close and if it cannot be changed, um, any shape or form that I don't know, like as is with the table that's there on the 20th page 26, right? It doesn't really qualify for the setback uh, line or it doesn't leave any space for the residents to breathe, right? So I'm not sure um, without any um, updates from the builder, I don't know what else can be done here. I would just ask if there's a way to make the to the deck look better if you don't like what you're looking at. Because um, I think at the end of the day, our, our options are to try and, and it's a seven story deck in the back there, not not nine stories, not that that's a huge deal, but um, is there a way to make that look better and feel better and keep the green space versus the alternative of trying to create this active retail space, taking away the green space and it's just it I, i'm just telling you it's not gonna it's not leasable the retail space back there can't lease so the the, the reality is those are kind of our options um and so is there i would just ask if there's not creativity around trying to keep the green space and trying to work with what we have on the parking deck um would seem like the best thing to do but we can also look at the the alternative of, of building retail space. Um, Mary and everyone, this is Paige. I was trying to figure out a way to like get some snippets so that we could do as Taiwo asked and give you, I guess, a little more direction and, and perhaps everyone may not agree with this, but like I was saying, you know, I, I like the green space. Um, I like the setback from the street. I, I do understand parking concerns um but i was trying to look at some examples and uh, you know the building that you guys have slated the, the the towers for that area and the what you've done at rail yard i think are great buildings and, and you know they are they're they're beautiful for the area and they're you know the combination of the brick and the metal and the windows and the ironwork i think is is a really interesting thing. Um, so I guess what I was suggesting is to take those elements and to begin to wrap them around the back of the deck. Um, a lot of you know companies, uh, CPCC has a, a great, as great as they can be, parking garage that uses you know brick in the precast tilt-up panels, and they use um, I guess faux storefront to create the entrances into the parking deck. So it creates a, a more intimate feel at those lower two levels where you have the screening and the murals and the louvers or, or whatever elements you'd like to use above, but on those lower pedestrian levels, beginning to incorporate some of the materialistic elements that you're using on your beautiful towers that, you know, have, have spent so much time designing just to wrap that around that residential side and, and perhaps, you know, maybe um, free, um, maybe that just makes sense for DeWitt or um, Putin Street or, you know, some of those, maybe not like the larger thoroughfare, but the, the the elements where you want people to be engaged in this green way. And especially for the homes, you know, you don't want car lights shining through opaque louvers, um, at, at least on those lower two levels, but creating, you know, pockets where the garage feels approachable, not like, oh, I need to stay on the sidewalk, stay away from that garage, 
you know, it has some elements that are, are tactile and really draw people, maybe not draw them to the parking garage, but don't scare them away. If that, if that makes sense to add a little bit more to what I said previously. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think that that does make sense. Um, I think those are some good suggestions. Um, this is Toby. I'd like to uh, agree with Paige and uh, looking for a chance to jump in to, um, yeah, respond to Tywo's request. We get specific, and I think Paige and I are, are thinking about the same things, particularly, um, I mean, really hats off to Beacon. Um, you build beautiful buildings. Um, and I was kind of, kind of been perusing the the marketing um, for for this uh, for the Lotha Building Three, and I mean it does not fail to meet expectations. Um, beautiful brick building, um, yeah. Incorporating some of those materials into the bottom two floors of the parking deck, um, I think really um, can go can go very far. And I don't think it necessarily um, is an active use scenario, uh, but I do think it creates a much more pleasant facade that ties the parking to the building. Uh, in a way that's a little more seamless and kind of with the landscaping can create um, a feeling of something being there besides the parking garage. Um, that, but I mean, that's my thoughts in terms of, of ways to really, to make this work without retail. Um, you know, you can't lease retail. It may take you a hundred years and two dollars a foot, but you can do it. Um, I don't think we want to require people build retail, particularly right now. Um, where, you know, I just don't think that's it. So I think the solution is the addition of building materials to the ground floor, maybe the first 24 feet of the building. Um, and if you really want to get engaging with the public, um, see what you can do with adding some specimens, some landscape specimens out there with some, um, maybe some markers or something so people, if they're interested, can go experience what's out there and understand, you know, learn about the trees and vegetation that's there, and um, between those two things, I'm not sure what else you might be able to do aside from retail. Thanks, Toby. Thank you, Paige. Um, any other comments or questions? All right. Um, so let's um, thank you. This is going to close out our public comment period. At this time, I'll invite recommendations from the ACRC. Once we have a motion and a second, I'll hold a roll call vote. So um, we have a motion. Do we have a motion for? Do we have a motion for approval? Approval with modifications or denial? Could I have a motion? Moved by. I would, like make, I would like to make a motion for approval um, with modifications that um, the applicant uh, add some of the building's uh, materials to the um, bottom two floors of the parking deck um, and seek ways to make the vegetated area more engaging and inviting to the public. Do we have a second? I second, Paige. Thank you, Paige. Thank you, a quick Toby. Question. Oh, sorry. I couldn't have the procedure in front of me. The um, approval with modification, they don't necessarily need to reapply for another hearing, correct? I just wanted to make that clear for the applicant. That's correct. I believe that's correct. Kirsty. That's correct. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, what I'd like to do now is to hold a roll call vote to capture everyone's recommendations. So, David? Uh, I vote no to that motion. All right, Renee? Renee? Oh, wait, can you hear, can you hear me? I can hear you now, thank you. Okay, yes, I vote yes to that motion. Paige? Yes. Thank you. 
Eric? Eric? Yep, I have to vote no on that. All right. All right. Um, Toby? Um, I, I made the motion, so I'm a yes. Yep. Uh, Padma? Padma? Uh, do you hear me? Can you hear me? I hear you now. Yes. Okay. I vote no to the motion. Thank you. And Mary Kelly, I vote yes. So we have one, two, three. We have four yeses and one, two, three noes. So with a vote of four to three, the ACR recommendation on this request is approval with modifications. And I'll just ask Kirsty to confirm that. Did I get that right, Kirsty? That's what I got as well. Okay, thank you. So that closes our meeting for today. As I mentioned previously, written comments on this request will be accepted until 11.59 p.m. on, on May 29th. The comments should be sent to our staff liaison at kirsty.sanchez um, at charlottenc.gov. Um, comments should be limited to 375 words. Staff will send the ACRC and staff recommendations and any written comments to the Planning Design and Development Director. The director will make a decision on the request. Thank you for joining our virtual meeting today. Thank you all. We appreciate your time and patience in our first meeting. Take care. Thank you. You do. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.